Remember this? Cigarette lighters were universal accessories in cars until the mid-1990s. We put one of these in a CT scanner to see how it works, and we found that it's a marvel of efficient, low-cost analog design. First, a refresher on how a cigarette lighter like this is used. We'll connect it to a 12-volt DC power supply, just as it would be in a car. To heat it up, the user presses the handle in. We see it start to draw current, and after a few moments, the handle pops up. Removing the lighter, we see a glowing coil that's hot enough to ignite a cigarette. You might think a system like this would involve a thermostat, a microcontroller, and an actuator. But this design was developed in the 1950s, and since it was manufactured by the million, it was thoughtfully tuned to be as simple to make and cheap as possible. There's nothing digital here. Let's start with a CT scan of the lighter assembly in its popped out position, as it would be after heating. We used a Neptune Industrial CT scanner to capture this. It works on the same principle as a medical CT scanner, capturing X-ray images from different angles and reconstructing them into a 3D model. We'll isolate the metal components of this assembly in our visualization by stripping away the less dense plastics. We can section this model on any plane in our software to see what's inside. When we cut in, we see the removable lighter with a giant bolt on top that fixes the plastic handle to it. Around the walls of the handheld lighter, there's a single coil spring. The heating element is visible in the center of the assembly, and below it is another bolt that's attached to the two arms of a spring clip. The coloring in this image indicates relative material density. Most of this assembly is made of stamped steel, but the darker area around the lower bolt is a ceramic insulator. Now let's take a look at a CT scan of the lighter after the handle has been pushed in. This is how it would be configured while it's heating. The heating element is being held in by the spring clip. At this point, a circuit has been created. When it's installed in a car, the bolt at the bottom of the assembly connects to a positive lead in the car's electrical system, and the tab on the outside of the housing connects to a negative lead. Current flows in through this bolt, which is isolated from the rest of the assembly by the ceramic insulator we noticed earlier. The current goes through the spring arms, into the outer rim of the heating element, then through the heating coil itself, into the bolt at the coil's center, and then into the housing, where it can return to the negative terminal. Why doesn't the current find an easier path and skip the high resistance coil? Let's take a look at an extra detailed scan of the heating element. Here's a cross section. There's a tiny gap between the heating element shield and the rest of the assembly. It turns out there's a thin strip of paper above it to insulate it, making the bolt at the center of the coil the only path for current to flow. The coil is interesting too. Here we see that it's bonded to the surrounding shield on one end and to the center bolt at the other. The coil is made of a nickel chromium alloy and it's oxidized, which insulates each loop from its adjacent loops and forces the current to take the long path all the way through the resistive filament rather than cutting across on a shorter path. So back to the big question, how does the cigarette lighter know when it's hot and ready to pop out? This spring clip holds the cigarette lighter in its depressed position and conveys current into the heating element. Its arms are bimetallic, with steel on the outer surface and copper on the inner surface. When the lighter's filament heats up, it also warms the spring arms. The copper on the inside expands faster than the steel on the outside, pushing the arms open and releasing the cigarette lighter. At that point, the coil spring here causes the handle to pop out, signaling that the lighter is ready. So there it is an entirely analog device that could be made cheaply by the millions without any digital control whatsoever. You can explore these scans for yourself. Just check out the link in the show notes below. And if you'd like to learn more about industrial X-ray CT technology and how engineers use it to improve everything from running shoes to medical devices, check out this introductory video or visit us at lumafield.com.